Hey YouTube, my name is Eve the Weed. Please like, share, and subscribe. We have come to closing of day two of Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion. This is Voyage for Works. You know my guy from New York City. He's out there and he's covering the case. Let's listen into what he had to say about the closing of day two and Megan Thee Stallion's testimony. Has caused her talking about how she initially did not want to do this. She wanted to try to protect Tori, and so there were very powerful moments of the testimony. She explained that ultimately she did decide to go to the police and say that Tori was the shooter because of the false narratives that Tori had put out there. In her mind, she felt like she was a grown woman. She shouldn't have been hanging out with these people, getting involved in this mess. I'm not quite sure who the, these people that like she was referring to when she was like, oh, I shouldn't be hanging out with them. She was hanging out with like Kylie Jenner, her assistant, Tori Lane. So I guess she just meant Tori. I thought that statement was very indicative about how Meg feels about this whole situation, which is basically that she did nothing wrong, she had nothing to do with this mess, and she just wants to be completely removed from the whole situation. She denied that Kylie Jenner told her to leave. She denied that her, the security guard and Kelsey, had at one point left and then came back because she said, I want to go back to get Tori. She said that it was the security guard who wouldn't leave without Tori, and that's why she was there. But at the same time, she also admitted that she didn't want to leave without Tori. So, again, it, it was a lot of this. She just didn't want to say anything that made her image look bad, and I don't know why. She denied that there was any sort of relationship between... Kelsey and Tori, which could have led to her being accused of going behind Kelsey's back. And like in the car, she admits that in the car, Kelsey accused her of going behind her back. So I don't know how she's denying that there's no relationship. The defense attorney asked her, hey, what did Kelsey mean when Kelsey said that this isn't the first time you've gone behind my back? And Meg said, oh, I don't know. Then we get to the shooting sequence, and I think the defense attorney did a really good job here focusing on the fact that, hey, did Meg Thee Stallion actually see who was shooting the gun? I don't think there's any doubt that five shots rang out. The question is, who pulled the trigger? Was somebody shoot pointing at her? And who? The defense attorney established this, that Meg is in the front seat, front passenger, that Kelsey is directly behind Meg, and that Tori is in the rear passenger seat. He got Meg to testify this. Meg gets out of the car. She walks a couple steps to the front of the car by the uh, absolute front. And then she goes a couple steps beyond that. All of this took a couple seconds. Within that time, apparently, Tory Lanez has made it from the rear passenger seat to now being on the passenger side. And from the passenger side, he pulls out a gun. She said he pulled a gun. From where, it's not clear. But he pulled a gun. He points it at her and shoots five times. Right before shooting, he yelled, dance bitch, leading her to turn around and then see him with the gun. He pulls it, points, shoots, five shots. Where's Kelsey in all this? She has no idea. What does she then do? She then crawls away. The part that the defense attorney focused on is how, in a matter of seconds, does he get from the rear passenger to having a gun in his hand to being on the passenger side in position to shoot over the window at you all in a matter of seconds. To me, there had to be something else that happened in that sequence of events from the time she got out of the car and the time the shots rang out. And then she completely denied that there was any sort of altercation between her and Kelsey as to whether there was an altercation between Kelsey and Tori. And there has to be some altercation nails because there's a fingernail on the ground and there's jewelry on the ground. And so had it, and Kelsey has blood on her, Kelsey has her, her swimsuit strap ripped off. So how did that all happen? And apparently there was a bump. She says that I saw a bump between Tori and Kelsey. And I guess the prosecutors will use that to establish why Kelsey is got her strap ripped and jewelry on the floor broken and a fingernail lying on the middle of the street. Bottom line, her testimony was strong, it was powerful, it was a victim telling you that a man shot her. All right, so from here, I think there's two important issues with this case. One, what are the other witnesses gonna say? What's the driver gonna say? What's Kelsey gonna say? And what is the wit Nate, there was a homeowner who lived there, who's in the house that is very close, very adjacent to where all of this is unfolding. He would have seen and heard a lot. He's gonna testify the other thing. The defense did a really good job of establishing that, hey, Meg's timeline here of in a few seconds, Tori gets out of the rear passenger, gets onto the passenger side of the vehicle, yells, dance bitch, pulls a gun, lets out five shots. That, there could have been a lot more that happened there in that sequence because that's a lot of things happening in a very small amount of time. And it is not clear from Meg's testimony that a jury would go ahead and say, oh yeah, that man pulled a gun and he was shooting out. I can see the jury looking at that testimony, looking at that sequence of events, saying that doesn't add up and that means reasonable doubt. We're looking at it and saying, well, okay, maybe something happened here, but did this guy intentionally pull a gun?